So welcome back to JM Lectures. This is on the second unit of grade 11 physics, vectors. And we're going to be doing two questions from this unit, taken from the national exam. So the question says two forces, F1 is equal to 8i plus 3j newton, and F2 is equal to 4i plus 6j newton, are acting on an object. What is the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force? Okay, so this question is about calculations. Therefore, whenever you have a physics question with calculations, always write the given first, okay, or what the question gives you and what you're then required to find, okay? So the given in this case, we have one vector, the F1, and this vector is a force, and we can write vector in, in different ways, but I like to write it like this. I write, like to write it like this, with 8 and 3, 8 being the x value and 3 being, being the y value, or 8 being the i value and 3 being the j value. So similarly, for F2, I would write something like this, 4 and 6, oops, 4 and 6 newtons. Right? So this is what we're given, and we're required to find two things, in fact. We're first required to find, I'm going to change my color here, we're first required to find the resultant vector, which I'll represent with F3, FR, sorry, and we're also required to find the resultant direction, which I'll represent with theta r. Okay? So it's two parts, it's a two-part problem, but this is really the basics and the foundation of vector addition. Right? To find a resultant of any vectors, you need to just add what you have. So literally, let's just do that. Let's go on to the solution. Let's go on to the solution right here, which I'll represent like this. All right? And we're looking for fr. Right? And fr will simply be equal to the sum of f1 and f2. It's as straightforward as that. The tricky thing becomes when these two are in vector forms. We'll see how to do that right now. Okay, so if I have two vectors, f1 and fr, let me replace the values that I have here. So that would be 8, 3 newton plus 4, 6 newton, right? I keep doing that. 4, 6 newton, okay? And adding vectors in this form, why I like to write it like this, is specifically because I can just add the top numbers with the bottom numbers. It's that straightforward, okay? So 8 plus 4 would give me 12, and 3 plus 6 would give me 9. It's as simple as that, okay? This can be my answer in vector form, okay? So the answer I have right here would be my answer in vector form. But I can also write this as a magnitude, all right? And how I would write that as a magnitude is also very simple. All I have to do to find the vector form, to find the resultant vector in magnitude form is just find the square root of these two values. So the square root of 12 squared plus 9 squared Newton, right? And that would simply be the square root of 225 Newton. And that will give me a value of 15 Newton, okay? So both answers are correct, but this is in vector form, and this would be the magnitude of the vector, right? And we're actually asked for the magnitude, so this would actually be our correct answer, okay? We are not done yet, though. We still have to find the direction of the vector, all right? So how do we do that? Well, it always helps to draw out vectors, additions, and subtractions, whatever you're doing with a vector, because it helps you visualize the answer more better, more accurately, in a sense. So let me draw out this vector right here. 12 newton and 12 and 9 newton. 12, 9 newton, okay? So 12 is my x value, so I'll write a value like this. This would be my x value, or the resultant vector in the x direction, which would be 12 newton. And then I'll write my y value like this, the resultant vector in the y direction, which would be 9 newton, right? Because we have 12, 9, 12, 9. And the actual resultant, we've actually found the value to be 15 newton. We will draw it by connecting the tail of FRx to the head of FRy. And that right there will be our resultant vector, which we already know to be 15 newton. But that's not our question. Our question is to find the direction. If you ask what the direction is, the easiest one to take would be this direction right here theta r, okay? So that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that theta r. And finding theta r is also pretty straightforward. All we have to do is, there's a simple formula to finding it, okay? Theta r is equal to the tan inverse, okay, of whatever's on the opposite side, which should be our y value, which should be our f r y, divided by, divided by whatever else on the x side, that would be our f r x. And it's as simple as that. Right after that, all you have to do is just add 
or just plug in the numbers. Okay, so that'd be the 10. Inverse of FRY is 9 Newton divided by the X value, 12 Newton, right? We can cancel out those Newtons there. And the resultant direction would be the tan inverse of 0 0.75. And if you plug that into a calculator, you can find that the tan inverse will be 37 degrees. And I just realized that you're not going to have a calculator if you're taking Matrik, but these values are given to you in the beginning of the exam. Uh, in the beginning of the exam, you're given the tan, you're given the sine and the cos values, and then you can find out the tan. But anyway, this will be the direction, 37 degrees. All right. So we have our magnitude here, and we have our direction here. So let's look at the choices, and we see it's in fact our first choice right there: 50 newton and 37 degrees. You see the second one, there's also 37 degrees, but it's negative 37. And negative 37 would be a completely different direction than what we have here. Okay, so that's it. All right, so we're back here in JM Lectures, and we are doing the third question of this series. It's still on the second unit of grade 11 physics vectors. And the question is as follows. The diagram below shows the path taken by a flying bird. That's the diagram we have right here. And the question says, which one of the following vectors may represent a resultant displacement? So again, I'm not going to give you the choices, so we can try to figure this out without looking at the choices first, because choices sometimes confuse us, all right? So this diagram shows the path of a flying bird. It means you're looking at it from bird's eye view. It's kind of funny that you're looking at a bird from bird's eye view. But anyway, let's just draw this diagram again, all right? So we have a horizontal line like this, and we have one like this, and something going this way. And then one going up like this, right? So I think that's a pretty good representation of the diagram that we have here. So this diagram is using vectors to represent the path of the bird, all right? Arrows are the perfect representation of vectors because it shows both magnitude and direction, okay? The arrowhead points the right direction. So you can see the bird's going this way, this way, that way, and that way, right? So in finding our answer to find the resultant displacement, right? We're looking for the resultant displacement. We need to find a vector, basically, with both magnitude and direction. So we're not giving any numbers here, which means we have to try to graphically find this resultant displacement. The definition of displacement is the shortest distance. It's a distance, it's a length, right? But it's the shortest length to get from the initial to the final point. The good thing about vectors is the initial and final points are very clear. The initial point of the first vector, which we have right here, we know the bird starts right at this point. And the final vector, right, is just the tail. I mean, I'm sorry, it's just the head of the final vector. So the tail of the first vector to the head of the final ve vector. All we do is just connect this tail to this head. It's as simple as that, and this would be our resultant displacement. That's it. So if we look at our choices, we have to find something that is similar in this direction, okay? It's not quite horizontal. It's a little downwards and towards the right, all right? So if we look at our choices here, we see I have a whole bunch of vectors, right? And you could, if you're on the exam, you can just try to place these vectors and see if they connect the head to the tail or see if they close off this path, right? And we see that the, similar, the closest answer to what we have is D right here, which is also a vector aimed slightly downwards and to the right. That's it. It's as simple as that.